What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlogs. Today we're gonna be doing something pretty simple and this is the grill replacement on the Bronco. Now listen, I know this kind of seems like I'm up badging the vehicle or whatever, but I'm not really against up grilling a vehicle. Now that's pretty apparent right here as I have a GT500 style front and lower grill on the Mustang. This is not a GT500, this is a 5.0. And this one is an Outer Banks, which comes with this like six pill pocket is what I call it, uh, style grill in gloss black. We are gonna be changing this out for the Wild Track version of the grill, which to me, I think looks a lot more aggressive and looks a little bit sportier. I actually picked up this Wild Track grill on Amazon. It was around $460. So it's not necessarily super cheap, but this is way cheaper than going with the OEM one. Now, of course, this isn't a Ford OEM part, but it is already painted gloss black. They also have like matte black and I think white available as well. So maybe the white would look cool as well. I don't know, but I just want to go with the black because that's kind of the theme on this car is white and black. So I went with the glossy black. It's like a one-to-one -one match pretty much to the Wild Track one. And it even came with brand new white Bronco letters that'll go across the front. So we'll see how those match as well. I've already somewhat took it upon myself to unbox this thing just to make sure everything is there the way it should be. But I did notice right away we have the new letters, which they're all individually wrapped. Very nice. I don't think any uh, problems there. Also, we have all the hardware for it. We'll make sure that we have enough. Um, but honestly, the way, I just wanna review the way that this thing is actually boxed. There's a big piece of foam as well here. I left that inside, um, but it's fully packaged, double bubble wrapped. I already took off the first layer here, um, but actually in here, it's another layer of like this foam wrap and you can see that it's all taped up. I popped it open a little bit there just to show you guys. And I was checking all these pins. So there's the four big pins here and then there are the, um, all these little pins right here. So I wanted to make sure these weren't bent or any like wear marks or anything like that. Everything looks really good. Um, all four pins look really good. And the glossy finish so far looks like it's gonna be really good. Here are the two grills lined up. You can see mine's really dirty. You can also see this blacked uh, plate here. This is actually gonna be where the Bronco letters go, but they just ship it with this to hold it. Um, but everything looks really good so far. No pits or like any streaks or anything like that as far as the paint goes. Looks like we got some adhesive residue there, but that's pretty easy. It might be from the tape and packaging, um, but everything looks really good. Even on the edges, I don't see anything. So, so far I'm very happy with it. In case you guys didn't know, Broncos actually can be kind of determined as far as what package they are based off the, the grill. So with the Outer Banks, it's stuck with this grill. Um, I think the Black Diamond has the gray version of this grill. I think that the Wild Track is the one with this grill, obviously, and then the Badlands is the one with the gray version of this grill. So it's kind of uh, funny that with Ford, you can't choose your grill. So even if I like this grill the most, I can't do that and put it on the vehicle unless I buy a Wild Track. So I'm sure I'm gonna get hate for this, but it's not a Raptor grill or anything like that. It's just something that I enjoy that's more my style and I was able to buy it now on Amazon. So that's what I did. Taking off this uh, black band here, which just be careful about that on your grill. Um, it's pretty simple to see where the letters go. So we're gonna unpackage all of these and they should be gloss white. Um, and then we'll use the supplied hardware to attach everything. The OEM letters are plastic welded on. So you actually have to drill them out and then re-glue them on. This one, because it's aftermarket, actually, oh, look at that, I gotta be um, the first letter. Uh, these are actually a little bit uh, better because you can screw them on. Now, I will say that this is not a 100% match to the OEM B. I'm looking at the B right now. The OEM one has a little bit larger of a gap here. It's not gonna be a big deal once it's on because it's still gonna show Bronco, but I'm sure this is how they get away from Ford being on their butts about what this says um, and being you know, an OEM match. So I'm sure that this just mounts right in there just like so. One thing I did notice online is some people had crooked looking letters. So I wanna make sure that this is perfectly flush and straight across because I'm OCD. Um, and I think that they just rushed their install and didn't double check that. So as simply as possible, we're going to install the Bronco letters. It does have an alignment post. So we're gonna go with that. Start with one and we're just gonna lightly install it just to get it started. We'll make sure it's all aligned on the other side. I feel like this part's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just gonna knock out all the letters, and if anything pops up, then I'll show you guys along the way. We're coming along pretty good here, but one of the things to note is that this is built for the non-camera function um, grills. My car does have the camera, the front 360 camera, so we will have to trim these two posts. So in each of these corners, one, two, three, four, 
Now, you can use a Dremel, of course, that's a tool that you can use, or what I'm gonna do is use a dike, which is what they recommended and I saw in one of those videos. So we're just gonna take dikes and I'm gonna squeeze it and uh, hopefully we don't crack anything and it comes out pretty clean, but that's what they did and they just did a simple cut and it works. So let's see if this works the way it's supposed to. I have to go from the backside. Let's see. Oh my gosh. What freaking pliers were they using? Okay, so we actually did clear it right there. So maybe you just have to go on both sides, front and back. And now we can go ahead and put on the other two um, letters as well, which I think will cover up a little bit of that. If not, I can always file it if we do need more clearance. Though this can be done alone, I would recommend having someone help you put on the letters, but we have the letters all nice and straight there. And this kind of gives you the side-by-side -side comparison of what we had with what we're putting on. So these are those little uh, mesh style pockets that I really like versus the six here. Looks like we just have these uh, push pins to take off this cowl here. I don't think we have to take off the air box. I think this will kind of separate itself uh, from this piece. And then from there, I think it's four 10 millimeter bolts. And then this whole thing actually like pulls off. Like we have four 10 millimeter bolts. So one here, one here, and then one here, and then one here as well. So hopefully you guys can see those. It's not the one on the left, it's the one on the right because that's the actual core support. So we're actually going for this one, not that one. Should be able to pry it from the edge, just like so. Be careful of the camera. You do have that wiring there. Just gonna pop it out. Let's see if I can get my finger behind there. Not doing a whole lot of pressure or uh, fast movements, just doing built up pressure. Looks like here we have the wiring harness. Unplug that before we pull it off. Something I wanna showcase that's very important if you do have the, uh, the front camera is this brown clip and where you disconnect it. I don't want you guys breaking this because this is your front camera. Use a tiny screwdriver or something like this. You're gonna push down on this little paddle. So let me try to show that in the camera. But right there, you're gonna push down and then it'll pop right out. And once you get to this washer, because every front camera actually has a cleaner underneath of it that sprays it when you do your windshield wiper cleaners or windshield cleaner. The way you take this off is you squeeze the like oval side really hard and then it'll pop right out. So hopefully you can see that on camera, but you're just gonna squeeze these two. It's like a pressure clip and you can see it straightens out to a circle and that's how you take those off. And from there, the grill will pull right off. I think because we have the front camera, there's a whole other piece like this will come with it. So I'll go ahead and be sure to take this off. It looks like it's these silver Torx bolts. We'll go ahead and take those off, move this over to that grill. Uh, there are, there should be provisions for that. I will double check that. Um, but we'll just go ahead and transfer this over to the new grill. Alrighty, you guys, so we're running out of light here. Luckily I have the light on the camera, but we have everything transferred over. Those little extra tabs that you guys may have seen when I clipped weren't a big deal. The camera fit on there just fine. So don't worry about that. Um, I did move over, for example, the T30s down here, there's two here, and then there's some on the top of T25. So make sure you don't strip them out. They are different sizes, but that whole panel with these Torx will just swap right over. Then we put on the supplied J clips. So on all of these posts, just like OEM. And now uh, we should be able to just snap this in with the J clips and then we'll put in the four 10 mils on top. Let's go ahead and just pop a, a pin in on this side so it stays, it doesn't come flying at me. That one's held in a little bit. One thing I'm really impressed about, honestly, is the fitment around the headlights and the side fender. This is very much OEM, and I'll show you guys here in a second, but this is very, very uh, a pleasant surprise, I'll say. For the dramatic effect, let's go ahead and turn on the DRLs just by opening and closing the door there. Now you can see the magic. Oh yeah. Yeah, buddy. That's what I wanted right there. I love these DRLs. It's one of the coolest features. Everything looks so good. Let me get you guys off the tripod and show you the close up. But look at how good the fitment is on this. This is OEM quality right here. Like this is really, really good. All around the headlight looks OEM. My Bronco letters are nice and level, which you guys can't see as I'm moving around. 
You can see all the little pill marks right here or the, the pill vents. I really, I guess, call them pills. They look like that, they're ovals. Um, but even on this side, again, perfect fitment. No squeaky clips, no squeaking along there. It's very, very uh, stout. I really like it. And the Bronco letters look good. The camera is like OEM. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. I'm gonna try to put the light on there. 360 cam, front camera is there. So all good, everything is working, looks exactly like it did. It's not crooked or anything like that. We're all good to go. Of course, it's not an OEM piece. I think the OEM grill unpainted is $400. Then you have to go to a body shop, have them prep and paint it. And then it also doesn't include letters. So OEM letters are very expensive. Then you also have to have them plastic welded or you know tapped in on the backside just like this, but it's up to you how you install that. Um, so yeah. This is a lot cheaper than an OEM option. Of course, you're not getting an OEM grill with the OEM part number, but this is very, very close. And this really says nothing because I have a CDC grill on the Mustang, which isn't OEM, and it's still really good, still holds up very well, and I'm very happy with it. So aftermarket isn't always the bad thing. If I was to rate this install, I'd say it's like a four out of 10. It's really, really simple, um, and it just takes a few basic tools, you know, pry tool and 10 mil and stuff like that, screwdriver, you should already have that. Um, it's really, really simple. So anyone can really do this, whether you're changing to this grill or an OEM grill or anything. It's a very simple process. Literally anyone can do this. Golly, I freaking love how this looks, man. I freaking love it. The more I'm looking at it, this is like the missing piece. I really like the Outer Banks grill, don't get me wrong, but this one is just, it does something different. It's like me when I had the Mustang and I had the two fog lights. I love that look, but just having the all blacked out GT500 look is also just so freaking nice. Oh man, I love it. I freaking love the look. By the way, you guys, I still do have five of my Sasquatch wheels and tires. Please take these off my hands. They're taking up my garage. I have three here, two more down there in the back, but please hit me up if you're interested in my Sasquatch wheels and tires. They're in very good condition, no uh, scratches or rubs or anything like that. And basically brand new tread on these things. That's pretty much it. I showed you guys how we take off the OEM grill, how we install the new grill, and we even prepped it for the 360 front camera. So if you didn't have the 360 front camera, your install is even simpler. It'll just happen like instantly. Uh, that took me a little while just to figure out, just to make sure I wasn't messing anything up. I really didn't want to mess up my front camera, but I showed you guys everything along the way. It's very, very simple, and hopefully my video here helps you guys whenever you're installing your grill. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up right here. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.